Your Majesty's Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Colleagues and Friends, as Chairman of the Science and Technology in Society Forum, I am honored to declare the opening of the Your Majesty, we are profoundly grateful and academic areas to discuss the lives and struggles of science and technology from a long term perspective. I feel deeply honored to welcome over 1,600 leaders to this occasion. Your presence here reflects our shared commitment to shaping the future of humanity. Ever since our ancestors migrated out of Africa about 200,000 years ago, humankind has spread across the globe, flourished as a species, and developed civilization throughout our own history. Living conditions have improved, though progress was very slow until the 18th century. Then, 200 years ago, the Industrial Revolution came and changed everything. The speed of development picked up dramatically. Second S in SES. The shift to circularity also means moving from concentration to decentralization toward communities where resources and opportunities are more evenly shared. Thus, inequality and division can to reform society through dialogue and consensus, and in third, to use AI to connect knowledge and speed up solutions. Together with the three pillars of society, bios, renewable energy, and the urban mind, these engagements from the base form the base for a sustainable future. Now, let us begin the SCS Forum 2025. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to join you today together with the Empress at the opening ceremony of the 22nd annual meeting of the Science and Technology in Society Forum. This is the sixth time I have attended the STS Forum since its founding in 2004. It is of great significance that the STS Forum has held lively discussions over the last 21 years on various issues related to the lights and shadows of science and technology, as well as the sustainability for the future of humankind. I would like to express my deep respect for all the efforts made by those dedicated to organizing this forum, as well as those who participated in the previous forums. I understand that this year's program places a particular emphasis on the evolving field of artificial intelligence, or AI. AI is already generating profound innovations across a broad spectrum of fields, including medicine, education, industry, transportation, and even the arts and cultural domains. At the same time, we are confronted with a host of challenging issues, ethical considerations, the protection of privacy, the impact on employment, and need for transparency in AI-driven decision-making, to name but a few. These are matters that require careful, thoughtful deliberation over a wide range of disciplines and perspectives. There is a need for experts 
in various fields from all over the world to address these urgent issues by creating interdisciplinary new networks. In thinking of the future of humankind, it is important to discuss these issues, including the environment, energy, food, and water, not just 20 or 30 years from now, but from a longer term perspective. And this goes beyond mere national borders. This is for the sake of everyone living on our planet. Let me express my heartfelt wish that global leaders will continue their efforts to bring their wisdom together and search for the best way to make the most of science and technology for the future of our Earth and the sustainable development of humankind. In conclusion, I sincerely hope that this annual forum here in Kyoto will once again contribute to the sound advancement of science and technology and the future of humanity. Thank you very much. Your Majesty, thank you very much. And next, we are pleased to share a video message from Prime Minister. Than ever. Our world faces fragmentation and uncertainties. Technological competition is rising even among allies. Scientific freedom is under pressure worldwide. In this context, Europe's vision remains unchanged. Openness and international cooperation must guide the future of science and technology. We believe that scientific cooperation can build bridges even in challenging geopolitical times. Technological partnership is an engine of common prosperity. This approach allows us to address challenges that are too big to be addressed by any country alone, like global health or sustainable food systems, but also to deliver better solutions to our citizens, like more secure and competitive green technology. And this is the goal of cooperation on hydrogen safety, for which later today Europe and Japan will sign a memorandum. Gracious presence today, and to all of you gathered here, I sincerely hope that you will engage in meaningful discourse. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Their Majesty. The Emperor and Empress will now take their leave from the stage. We kindly invite you to join us in expressing our deepest respect with warm applause.